Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's video is an updated version of a very popular video I uploaded almost exactly two years ago. It was called, probably exactly what I'm going to call this one, the Ultimate Drugstore Makeup Starter Kit. Being that so much new drugstore makeup has launched in the time since I did that first video, I felt like it was pretty necessary to update this with some great new products. I am going to be doing this one a little bit differently than the original, simply because, well, I like to change things up. What's exactly the same, however, is I once again curated what I consider to be the ultimate drugstore makeup starter kit specifically designed for beginners, someone who perhaps is new to makeup, or maybe you're someone who spent the last 10, 15, 20 years raising children and you didn't really focus a lot of your attention on yourself and now you're interested in learning more about makeup but you don't want to go out and spend a fortune and because there is so much out there you walk into an Ulta or a Walgreens or a Target and these shelves are just packed with all of these different products and you just don't know how to choose. So I'm hoping that this video will help you. So there's one more thing I forgot to mention. I am 49 years old and while this video is intended for people of all ages, I did choose many of these products specifically with mature skin in mind. Now, just like with the last video, I'm going to assume you are all set with your skincare. You have already cleansed your skin, you have applied moisturizer, eye cream, some sunscreen, and for me, the next step is primers. I do have extremely oily skin and extremely oily lids. So in the 2020 video, I spoke about my love for the Milani eyeshadow base. I still think it's excellent and probably the best drugstore choice for eyeshadow primers. I did some research, I tested out several other eyeshadow primers, and unfortunately there really weren't any at the drugstore that wowed me. And I think we all know that drugstore prices are going up and up, so I hesitated on whether or not I should include this primer, which happens to be the one I'm using in this footage. This is from About Face. This is called the Smoothing Shadow Fix. This is available at Ulta and it retails for $13. So it's not extremely inexpensive, but it is only a couple dollars more than the Milani. I find that this eyeshadow primer does everything I want it to do. It keeps my eyeshadow on all day long. It makes the shadows I apply on top of it even more vibrant without making my lids feel dry. Believe it or not, there are eyeshadow primers that even on my oily lids will make my lids look and feel dry. And I don't think that's what any of us want. So and then something else I'm going to repeat from the original video is that when it comes to face primers, they are not always necessary, especially if you have normal to dry skin. If your skin is normal to dry, your skin prep, meaning the serums, oils, moisturizers that you use before your makeup application should be enough to keep your skin looking hydrated and glowing, especially if you're using the right foundation for your skin type. Now, when it comes to oily skin, a lot of us do benefit from primers, whether they help to smooth enlarged pores, which oily skin has a tendency to have more so than any other skin type, it also helps to keep shine at bay. It also helps our foundation to last a little bit longer, especially if we are not wearing a quote unquote long wearing foundation. The foundation I will be demonstrating in this video today is not necessarily the best one for my skin type, but it does work when I pair it with an oil controlling gripping primer. And this one is from Revlon. It is the Colorstay Grip 16 hour matte primer. As you can see in this footage, it immediately takes down the shine from my skin. And if I want to wear a foundation that is not specifically made for oily skin, I find this primer to be extremely beneficial and honestly one of the best I have found at the drugstore for controlling oil and keeping my foundation looking fresh all day. So moments ago, I did mention that my foundation recommendation is one that is not exactly the best for oily skin, but 
I can make it work. I don't think I'm alone in being someone with oily skin that can make this foundation work. This is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Dewy Foundation. I actually have an entire video dedicated to this foundation. And the reason why I chose this foundation is because I do think that it is going to work for the majority of skin types. That said, something else I wanted to do differently in this video was also include some other options for different skin types. If you have dry to very dry skin and you are looking for an ultra natural, sheer to medium coverage foundation, I would try the L'Oreal True Match Nude Hyaluronic Tinted Serum. Now, unfortunately, this foundation did not work at all for me. It did not stay on. It made me excessively shiny, but when I tell you that everyone else seems to love it, everyone else with combination to dry to very dry skin seems to absolutely adore this foundation. So just because a foundation doesn't work for my skin type, I didn't want to not share it with you when this video is supposed to be a starter makeup kit for all skin types. So once again, if you are dry to very dry and you're looking for more sheer to medium, I would go for this foundation. And if you would like a little bit more coverage, I would go for the Wet n Wild. If you have oily skin and you just don't want any dewy foundation whatsoever, two of my absolute favorites from the drugstore are the Hard Candy Glamouflage and the CoverGirl Outlast Extreme Wear. This one with the orange cap. There was a different version from a few years ago that they discontinued and then they brought out this one. Both of these are excellent medium to full coverage foundations for combination oily to very oily skin. And in my 2020 video, I talked about the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear, which is another one that I still think is incredible that will work for a wide variety of skin types. All right, moving on to concealer. My number one concealer recommendation once again, for all skin types, whether you are 25 or 55, whether you have very dark circles or you're someone who's very lucky and has very faint dark circles, if any, the NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer is excellent. A little bit goes a long way. Your under eyes will never look dry and cakey. If you've tried this concealer and perhaps it just didn't give you enough coverage, I would recommend the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear. I definitely think it gives a little bit more coverage than the NYX. And then even though I've had some people disagree with me on this, I still think that the Milani Conceal and Perfect Longwear Concealer gives some pretty amazing coverage and it lasts all day long. Moving on to powders. There are quite a few really excellent powders at the drugstore. Probably my all-time favorite drugstore loose powder is this one from Wet n Wild. It is the Photo Focus Translucent Loose Powder. It is so beautiful. It is so silky. It is so finely milled. It makes your skin look airbrushed. But if your skin is a little bit more on the oily side like mine, I've really been enjoying the Maybelline Fit Me matte and poreless powder. I use this not only to set my concealer, but I also use it to set my lids, and then I also dust it throughout my T-zone. Then another great powder option is this one from number seven. Once again, all of the full names and shades will be listed and linked down below in the description box of this video. Moving on to brows. You really cannot go wrong with the NYX Micro Brow Pencil. I'm using the shade Ash Brown. This pencil is an excellent alternative for the far more expensive Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. They look identical, they perform almost identically. There's really no reason to pay the price for the Anastasia when these NYX micro pencils are just as good. Something a lot of my regular viewers know is how much I love this brow tint from Ulta Beauty. But I kind of wanted to keep the products in this video easily accessible to everyone, and I know not everyone lives near an Ulta, so I wanted to keep the majority of the products in this video to brands that anyone watching around the world could hopefully have access to. So after the Ulta brow tint, my next choice would be this brow product from e.l.f. It is called the Wow Brow. It's very similar to the Ulta in that it has a very, very small applicator, which I happen to really like. It gives my brows that nice lift 
with a little bit of fluffing and sets them in place all day. Okay, picking one eyeshadow palette, just one for this video was no easy task. But as I looked through all of my drugstore palettes, I felt like I had to choose the one that I dedicated an entire video to raving about that I still love and is what I currently have on my eyes today. It just continues to impress me and it's only $8. This is the Wet n Wild Always Naked Eyeshadow Palette. This is quite honestly the best $8 eyeshadow palette I have ever purchased. Well, let me rephrase that. It is probably the best under $15 eyeshadow palette I have ever purchased. And having had a YouTube channel for many years now, I've actually tried quite a few budget-friendly eyeshadow palettes, and this one is definitely the best. Here's a quick tutorial for the look I have on today. I'm using the two middle shades from the third row of the palette, mixing them together for my transition shade. And as you can see, they are pigmented, they're blendable, and there's little to no fallout. Now I'm taking some concealer to do a soft cut crease and blending the concealer out on the lid. And then I'm taking the third color from the top row, which is a very muted ivory shimmer, and pressing that on top of where I have placed the concealer. Because I do have plans for dinner tonight, I am upping the glam a little with this beautiful ivory sparkle. Then I'm taking this slightly shimmering taupey brown from the bottom left corner of the palette and applying that to the outer corners of my eyes using some scotch tape as my guide. And this brush is very affordable. It is from Echo Tools. Then I'm blending everything out with the reddish brown from the third row of the palette. There is not a single eyeshadow in this palette that I think is a dud. Well, actually, maybe I shouldn't say that. I personally do not use this gold topper shade because I just haven't had the occasion to want to use it, but it is very pretty, and I think that someone might get use out of it. But even if you don't use it, once again, this palette is only $8. In the 2020 video for eyeliner, I talked about the Almay Eye Pencil, which I still think is one of the best out there, especially if you have sensitive eyes like I do. I find that as we get older, our skin does become more sensitive. I know not only my facial skin has become more sensitive, but also my eyes. I cannot use any sort of gel eye pencil at all. If I want to tight line my eyes, which means to apply color underneath my lashes, or perhaps in my lower water lines, I have gone back to using this pencil from L'Oreal. This is the Voluminous Smoldering Eyeliner. I like that it's a chunky pencil because I find I'm less likely to poke myself in the eye with it. For some reason, when I use thinner, traditional eye pencils, I'm always poking myself in the eye when I tight line. I honestly have no idea why. I also have no irritation from this product, and I find that if I tight line my upper lash lines, it does not travel to my lower lash line. If I want black in my lower lash lines, I have to actually put this there. And the liquid eyeliner I find myself always recommending and always repurchasing myself is this one from Physicians Formula. This is the Eye Booster Pen. Today I'm using it in black, and I'm just using it to make a tiny wing because I will be going over it with shadow to smoke it out. I find this liquid eyeliner to be extremely easy to use. It's extremely long wearing. It comes in black and brown. I love both of them. I would show you the brown, but I have misplaced it and I am going to run out tomorrow and buy a new one because I cannot be without it. I think it's safe to say that a lot of people's favorite drugstore mascara is either the Lash Princess from Essence or the Voluminous from L'Oreal. Now don't get me wrong, I like those too, but in the past couple of years, the drugstore mascara I find myself reaching for the most is the L'Oreal Lash Paradise. 
I have very, very fine, blonde, short lashes. And this is one of the best mascaras I have found for length, volume, and separation without smudging. Because this video is supposed to be tailored towards beginners, I'm not showing you any type of contour product. Because if you are truly a beginner, you really don't need to mess with contouring, especially on a daily basis. So I'm going to show you right now in this footage how I sort of bronze and contour at the same time using this bronzer from L'Oreal. This is the infallible 24 hour fresh wear bronzer. It has a soft matte finish. It is waterproof. I'm wearing the shade 350 medium. It glides on the skin so easily. It blends beautifully. The color selection is excellent. I'm sure you will be able to find your shade and it's going to last all day long. I just can't say enough good things about this new bronzer. Moving on to blush. I have so many drugstore blush favorites. The Milani baked blushes, the Revlon powder blushes, these cream blushes from Pixi, these blushes from NYX. They are all so, so good. But if I had to tell you to choose one that beats them all that you can get on Amazon, it would be these blushes from Koki Cosmetics. They are currently just under $10 on Amazon. Look at the size of these though. These are going to last you a very, very long time. The colors are stunning. The one I use today is this gorgeous pink gradient called Heartthrob. These are incredibly pigmented, so I am using a brush that offers a little bit more of a diffused color. But if you love the look of a bold blush, by all means, just go in with your traditional blush brush and get that stunning flush of youthful color. And even though I don't think every beginner's makeup kit needs a contour product, I do believe that a highlighter is pretty important. Whether it be a liquid highlighter like this one from Wet n Wild called Halo Glow, or a powder highlighter like this one from CoverGirl, which is my pick for my kit, this is the True Blend Super Stunner in the shade Pearl Crush. This is not a new product. I've been talking about it for a couple of years now. Before I decided to talk about it in this video, I did look online to make sure that it has not been discontinued, that it is still available, and it is still available, thankfully, because I think it is positively stunning. Oh my goodness, we talked about mascara, but I forgot to talk about an eyelash curler. Everyone needs an eyelash curler curler. Unless, of course, you are so lucky that you already have lifted lashes, eyelash curlers are a must for opening up the eyes and just giving your lashes a fuller appearance. All right, moving on to lips. We could be here all day with me just recommending lip products to you, so I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. When it comes to lip liners, you cannot go wrong with NYX. NYX makes some of the best lip liners on the market. They're so affordable and there really isn't a color they do not make. Whether you are looking for a red, an orange, a purple, a nude, NYX has it. For this look, I am using the shade Natural. And now I'm filling in my lips with one of my favorite matte lip creams. This is Stockholm for NYX, which as you can see is sort of a peachy pink. If that is not your cup of tea, these lip creams come in so many other colors. I felt like I could not do this video without recommending two more lip products. The Milani Color Fetish lipsticks, especially the matte formula. They are so good. This matte formula feels better on my lips than the $34 Charlotte Tilbury matte lipsticks I own. No joke. If you have not tried one of these Milani matte color fetish lipsticks, please do yourself a favor and purchase one immediately. And I also highly recommend these Maybelline Superstay lip vinyls, specifically the shades Peachy, Cheeky, and Dainty. 
These last all day long. I have found them to be transfer proof, which I think is important to a lot of us. I just hope they expand the shade range because I do feel like they need a few more sort of nude and nude pink shades. Well, that's just me being a little selfish because those are the shades that I like. And I'm topping off my NYX lip combo with this e.l.f. Plumping Lip Gloss. I have recently become addicted to these glosses. Look at that shine. This particular color is called Champagne Glam, but I also love Mocha Twist and Sparkling Rosé. And prior to falling head over heels for the e.l.f. Plumping Glosses, I was obsessed with, like many of you, the Maybelline Lifter Glosses. I have them in all of these shades and also the NYX Butter Glosses. I have them in all of these shades. So I guess you could say if you are curating your own beginner's drugstore makeup starter kit and you are in need of a lip gloss, I would definitely stick to looking at the Maybelline or the NYX or the e.l.f. Each of these comes in so many different shades. You are bound to find at least two or three that you are going to love. And to finish off your kit, you are going to want to buy a setting spray. If you have combo to dry to very dry skin, I recommend this one from Milani called Make It Dewy. And if you have oily skin, I recommend this one from NYX. This is just their matte finish, long lasting setting spray. All right, before I close this out, I promised you I would talk about brushes. Real Techniques are some of the best affordable makeup brushes you can buy. They come in all shapes and sizes, and I have yet to find one that I purchased that I did not like. As I think I said earlier in the video, I tend to use a lot of pricier brushes simply because I worked as a makeup artist for so long and truth be told I get sent a lot of brushes from a lot of higher end brands like BK Beauty, like Refer, but you can also find great brushes from Morphe. And in this video, I did use quite a few of the brushes in the Morphe Makeup by Ariel collection. This set is $100, so I know that's not cheap, but you do get 11 brushes and they are all excellent. You can do your entire face with just this brush set. So if you break that down, these brushes are actually really affordable. I do believe that there's also an eye set you can purchase and I did recently hear a rumor that these brushes will soon be available individually. All right everyone, that concludes the 2022 update of my ultimate drugstore makeup beginners starter kit. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. If you are not already subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and join the Risa Does Makeup family. I do upload new content at least twice per week. You can also find more content from me on Instagram and on TikTok. The username is the same everywhere. It's all Risa Does Makeup. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in my next video.